This is the story of a nation and of one man whose life has mirrored and helped to shape it. A boy born into the midst of Malaysia's formation who devotes his life to building the new nation taking shape around him. A child of the time who becomes one of its most important leaders. This is the story of a Malaysian and his remarkable life and times. Lim Kit Sa has been in politics for over 50 years. He's the longest serving opposition parliamentarian in Southeast Asia. The Democratic Action Party was registered in March 1966. Dr. Chen Man Hin was the chairman. Lim Kit Siang was named as National Organizing Secretary. The DAP, when it was founded in 1966, made itself the pledge to bring about a Malaysia Malaysia. In other words, it's a Malaysia for all Malaysians. Rising above race, ethnicity, or uh, territory, that every Malaysian can feel proud to have an equal place under the Malaysian sun and will be able to fully contribute to the betterment of this country. In the lead up to the 1969 election, he immediately made his debut as the public face of DAP in a great cultural debate with another opposition party, Gurakan, led by Professor Nagid Alatas. The debate brought him wide recognition and in the third general election in May 1969, the political novice successfully challenged for a seat in parliament. It was the first general election the DAP had entered. The party won 13 parliamentary and 31 state assembly seats, securing almost 12% of votes cast. But celebrations were short-lived. Racial tensions flared. Three days after the election, there were riots in Kuala Lumpur. The government imposed emergency rule, and opposition leaders were arrested. I have already agreed to fly over to Kota Kinabalu to help the campaign of the independent candidates because the elections for the Sabah and Sarawak uh, were to be held two weeks later. So all the recent uh, uh, allegations that I was in Kuala Lumpur on May 13, I had to provoke May 13 because of my uh, wild conduct was uh, completely based because I was not in Kuala Lumpur at all. After a successful rally in Kota Kinabalu, he was immediately expelled from Sabah. Supporters urged him not to come back to Kuala Lumpur for fear he would be arrested. I told my party leaders that I will come back. While I told them that I'm not uh, thinking of returning, I felt that uh, having, having been just elected as a member of parliament, when the people are in trouble, how can you uh, just leave them alone and run away? On May 18th, Kitsiang flew home, and at the Subang airport... And they were checking the passport of uh, all the passengers who had to queue up for clearance. When it came to my turn, I just asked, you know, a question was just popped up. I asked, are you waiting for me? They looked at me, looked at the passport, and said, yes, I will follow us. So I followed them. Well, I think you are, you, are, you are fired by the sense of injustice, that you have been a victim uh, 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 because of, uh, they have done no wrong, so, and that, that this is uh, oppression at its worst, tyranny of the majority, and uh, you are fired by the sense of uh, injustice, and uh, I think that kept you uh, going. As the new leader of the party, Kit Siang determined to prove there was a future. He began carving a reputation for tackling issues unflinchingly whenever they arose. He called for a commission inquiry into a hunger strike by over 200 political detainees. He called for abolition of the Internal Security Act. He was convicted under the Official Secrets Act for exposing irregularities in a government arms deal. Highlighted the $2.5 billion BMF scandal. Exposed the North-South Highway privatization scandal and misappropriation of 1.5 billion ringgit of co-op deposits. The uncompromising stance helped the DAP to steady electoral growth. By 1978, the DAP was Malaysia's largest parliamentary opposition party, and Lim Kit Siang continued to be the parliamentary opposition leader for 30 years to come. On October 27th, 
Police cracked down on political leaders and social activists in a move known as Operación La Lang. Many of the people who disagreed with me demonstrated. Many of the people who disagreed with you, uh, I'm afraid, ended up in prison. Who? Hundreds of them. Hundreds Read every of Amnesty them. International that Human Rights Watch report for the years Western, in which you were in power. Western press, the problem is that you make up these stories and then you take it as uh, this, uh, the truth. It's not the truth. Tell me, who are the hundreds of people who ended up in prison? Over a hundred people were arrested from political parties, from social interests, uh, 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 NGOs, uh, a whole spectrum of them. After 60 days, Kit Xiang and Guan Eng were both sent to Kamunting detention camp. After about a year, batches by batches of detainees have been released, but not both of them. They were actually the last to be released. These 18 months actually the darkest moments in our family. Guan Eng and Kit Xiang were ultimately released in April 1989. With an election again looming, Kit Xiang was immediately given a new challenge to stand against Penang's seemingly invincible Lim Chong Yu, the man who had reigned as chief minister for a record 21 years. I was fighting at a grave uh, disadvantage. It was highly high risk. Against all expectations, Kit Chang beat the veteran chief minister, and the DAP took 42% of Penang's state seats, just short of forming a governing majority. In 2008, a dream that seemed lost had been made reality. In the most dramatic political comeback imaginable, Lim Guan Eng achieved his father's dream, leading the DAP into a majority in Penang in coalition with PKR and PAS to be appointed chief minister of the state. Kit Young's 30-year effort has finally borne fruit. The DAP had won the opportunity to demonstrate it has the skills to govern to govern on behalf of all races equally, to show they're not just a one-race party, to demonstrate Malaysian Malaysia, a Malaysia for all Malaysians. It worked very hard. First time fail, second time fail, and still he was determined, third time fail. But he never lost heart. He provides hope to the Malaysians, to people who want to see change in the country, who want a better society, who want to see corruption being unearthed, who want to see scandals being exposed, who want to see the downtrodden to have a voice spoken up for them. Even if he can't single-handedly transform the policy, he's raised very important questions about them. And that in itself, I think, speaks very highly of him as his contribution. In some ways, he was the conscience for the country. The party has been able to come to this level, to this uh, and, and this day, because of a group of dedicated uh, uh, Malaysians who are prepared to come together to fight for a better society. Through 70 turbulent years, ideas formed in Malaysia's first days by the boy who joked of being a politician have helped guide this country on the struggle to nationhood. His has often been a lone voice, yet he has moved a nation until the values he has unceasingly fought for are now being accepted as at the heart of the nation's future. And Malaysia stands now poised to enter a new era in which diversity, fairness, respect, and openness are valued by all. The realization of a dream.